Welcome to this Finland Azure User Group presentation. We again have a tips and tricks session for you guys lined up. Uh, just a little bit of introduction first, and then we can get to the actual meat of the presentation. So, as you probably know, Finland Azure User Group is the largest tech user group in Finland right now, and we recently reached 2,000 members. Wow. Uh, and these tips and tricks sessions have been these 30 to 60 minutes small sessions on some member of the community showing whatever they like, what they, they are kind of interested in and want to show the community. And uh, regarding Finland as a user group still, we have a couple of live events coming, so no longer these recorded ones uh, or online ones. So. Uh, the biggest of them is IgluConf coming uh, in roughly two months now, so in June. So visit igluconf.fi to check on the tickets because they are going uh, out pretty quickly, it seems. People are interested in uh, getting to conferences again, and we have a pretty awesome lineup coming up there. And the other panel, uh, next month, we have a security blast coming, so we have some security people talking up panel uh, at the Microsoft House live. So, without further ado, let's get to today's presentation. Um, you can take it away. Thanks, Pasi. Uh, yeah, I hope you can hear me just fine. I'm going to click on to the next slide briefly. Um, okay, uh, the topic for today's tips and tricks session is exploring Azure AD workload identity with, with uh, specifically Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, I'm going to have a few few words and a few slides about the background, sort of like set the stage on, on, on what, what's, what's the use case and purpose, why do we need the workload identity in, uh, in the first place, and also uh, taking a few steps into the history to see how things have been done done so far and what what sort of like new features uh the workload identity which is also sometimes called workload federation i think no sorry identity federation uh so we're going to take a, a look into the new features that 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 what it brings to the table uh without further ado a few words about myself uh, my name is Antti Pautiainen. i'm working as a consultant at, at polar squad uh I have a history from from like the operations and sysadmin uh, background. I've been doing that stuff for more or less ten years, give or take. Uh, historically, I've been involved with everything from data centers to networking and virtualization servers, uh, general architecture and and whatnot. Uh, got interested in 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 the cloud native thing way of things, and obviously doing a lot of Microsoft stuff. Azure has been sort of my Go to go to uh, platform of choice. Obviously, uh, I'm I'm always excited about high availability, reliability, uh, incident response, uh, chaos management, that sort of things. So yeah, those are definitely some of the themes that that uh, rock my boat, so to say. Um, but uh, I, I mentioned that we're gonna go through the mission statement and and let's let's start from from the stuff that that might already be familiar to you if you've been uh, running applications or workloads uh, on Azure. But, but nevertheless, uh, if you're working on any sort of application or services that are uh, running in Azure or, or interactive with resources that are, uh, or, or, or interacting with resources that are running in Azure, chances are that you're likely gonna bump into the Azure AD, Azure Active Directory, uh, which is, in my opinion, gaining a lot of foothold as sort of like the number one uh, identity and access management solution. Of course, that's that's always a thing when you're working in Azure, but also also outside of Azure, uh, especially with Azure uh, ADB to C, uh, Azure Arc and, and, and services like that. Uh, and obviously everything that's running in Azure uh, and that introduces or, or uh, includes any sort of like access management that's usually always done with Azure AD. So if you're trying to reach reach out for for uh, a secret management solution like Key Vault or or a container registry or or just storage or or SQL databases or whatever, uh, chances are that you're going to need to authenticate and, and get authorized by by uh, Azure AD. Uh, 
the original way of doing this was that the service principles were like the number one choice of or, or pretty much the only way of, of having a programmatic access uh, to any of these resources. That oftentimes meant that that you're you're uh, managing those 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 service principles and you're going to need to uh, keep tabs on on the life cycle of their secrets. Uh, those secrets were unfortunately oftentimes baked in, in into the uh, application source code. Then they were stored in in the version control, and 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 unfortunately you can still find some 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 application credentials from just like public repositories on on GitHub. And that's that's never been a good practice. And and yeah, basically, service principles are still uh, commonly used when when you're working outside of Azure, but but still interact with something that's running on Azure. Uh, but if 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 you're running if if you're, if you're running those workloads in Azure, uh, you've been most likely been able to take advantage of managed identity for for, for quite a while now, uh, which which uh, streamlines this this authorization process and and the managed identity pretty much works uh, as a as a wrapper outside of a, of a, of a service principle and offloads you uh, all the necessity of, of uh, maintaining those those secrets and credentials in in your code so basically it's 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 managed managed for you uh, by 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 Microsoft uh, so yeah after this, uh, the next question is that, that 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 if you're a Kubernetes nerd like me and, and a lot of my my colleagues, uh, how do we uh, get the best bang for buck of these native offerings such such, such as the managed managed identities? Uh, Kubernetes runs runs on 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 nodes, which are basically uh, virtual machines. If if you're doing it in Azure, and and the managed identities are often associated with a single virtual machine, for example. So if you're run, having a, uh, a Kubernetes cluster with, with, let's say, six or, or eight nodes, uh, uh, and you could still use the regular virtual machine managed identity with those nodes, but inside those nodes and inside the cluster, you may have uh, 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 uh, individual services, applications, whatever, and they want to have and consume their own identity instead of having to use a single identity that has access to all sorts of places that's that's not a good practice uh, from a security perspective and and can lead to quite a lot of ugly stuff so to say uh, back some time ago I can't remember the exact time but but Microsoft uh, announced an open source project called aad pot identity uh, which which uh, has been going going on for for quite a while now uh, AAD pod identity answered answer the question that I basically just, just pointed out that uh, we've been able to, to associate those managed identities into, into uh, individual virtual machines, but now we can take it one layer deeper so that we can use uh, the Azure AD pod identities and, and we can associate individual managed identities uh, into individual applications. So we, we can only provide the access and, and permissions that are necessary for that single application without having to having to make too much of like broad strokes uh, from from the uh, permissions perspective. Uh, this was only or this has been uh, only available in AKS. Uh, I haven't I haven't investigated Azure Arc that much, but as far as I know, uh, Azure Arc supports running or using managed identities outside of Azure as well. So I'm not sure if you would be able to hack your way into having the AAD pod identity uh, work on a Kubernetes cluster outside of Azure as well. Uh, but the primary use case has always been specifically for, for uh, AKS and running things in Azure. Uh, the workflow is and was is that that you would create the managed identities for, for your applications. Let's say that you have a uh, you're you're deploying a microservice and, and you have a backend application that you want to you want to communicate with the SQL database, for example. Uh, you would create a specific managed identity for the backend applications, uh, set the permissions, likely something related to the SQL database that you want to want to uh, interact with, with interact with. Uh, create a sort of like a binding between between that managed identity and and the application that's running in your cluster, and that's it. Pretty much 
by the way, hammer time. Uh, if, if you configured everything properly, uh, your application should should have a managed identity type of access to uh, to that Azure SQL database. Uh, the pod identity project has has its limitations. Uh, it includes a few custom resources. Uh, those are, well, if you're running Kubernetes, the custom resources are most likely like inevitable. Uh, but I still think that it's it's a good practice to try to avoid them when whenever that's that's possible. Uh, the pod identity itself, the application, the pod identity also requires some permission so that it can then further on uh, further on assign uh, the permissions uh, to your application identities. And uh, like I said, uh, the support has been pretty much Azure only. And so if you would like to use something similar outside of outside of AKS. Uh, you've been you've been mostly out of luck. Uh, yes, I remembered correctly. Uh, I did also have a slide illustrating illustrating a bit more technical approach into how the AAD pod identity works. Uh, but it's basically repeating the same things that I uh, just mentioned. Uh, you would you would install install the AAD pod identity into into your cluster, and that would. Uh, reveal custom resources such as the Azure identity and Azure identity binding. And what the uh, AAD pod uh, NMI server does is that basically it watches for traffic that's heading for the Azure IMDS, which is short for instance metadata metadata service. Uh, so whenever your your applications would, would be contacting contacting uh, that endpoint, uh, the the AAD pod identity does does some adjustments on that end and and sort of like handles the authentication authorization for you, and you receive the token required for for being able to um, authenticate with Azure. But but yeah, this is this is the technical high level uh, high level description of it uh, in a nutshell. And then then. Uh, at some point during down the road, uh, if, if, if you've been following the discussions and, and, and uh, roadmaps on, on the AAD pod identity projects uh, in GitHub, uh, you may have seen mentions of, of an AAD pod identity version two. And, and by the way, this first version has been uh, in sort of like a limited preview or, or a preview stage for, for quite a while. And then uh, I think at the end of last year, maybe, uh, Microsoft announced that, that that uh, they're not exactly making the version two, uh, but instead it's going to get rebranded and called Azure Workload Identity in instead. Uh, the way that it works technically is is a bit different from from AAD Pod Identity, and 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 we're going to take a look into into some of the similarities as well as the differences in uh, in the next next few slides. Uh, but yeah. Microsoft stated that the goal is to to be able to provide users with with sort of like a migration or or transformation steps and roadmap so that that they can keep on using using the same uh, similar workflow as what they've been doing with the AAD pod identity. Uh, so what 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 is the AAD workload identity all about? This this is going to be a mouthful for me during the presentation. Uh, the workload identity is is part of the the larger identity federation story that Microsoft seems to be promoting fairly heavily now. Uh, you may have seen mentions of of being able to do sort of like this passwordless authentication from GitHub Actions, for example, uh, which is which is uh, part of the same 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 grand idea that that Microsoft has enabled uh, federated identities. For, for Azure AD, basically what it means is that that you can you can you can configure a well-known identity provider and 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 establish a trust or a federation relationship between that identity provider and the Azure AD, and then they can then then uh, exchange tokens and and uh, perform the authorization process instead of having to to pass forward secrets and and passwords and and uh, whatnot. Uh, so yeah, the same 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 grand idea works with with Google Cloud. I haven't investigated that personally, uh, as well as GitHub Actions, and I expect this 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 list to to keep on growing uh, as we as we move forward during this year. 
and the AAD workload identity uh, is is now sort of like the the exact the direct solution on how to use the same workflow when you're running Kubernetes. Uh, instead of having to use uh, custom resources, uh, we don't really exactly install anything into the Kubernetes cluster anymore. Uh, we do configure uh, uh, a webhook, but that's not that's not sort of like a big deal uh, in my opinion. Not, nothing compared to to what you had to go through with the AAD pod identity. And and the end and end result of this is that that the Kubernetes cluster becomes an identity provider of its own, and and we do uh, then we can th then start issuing tokens uh, like Open ID Connect tokens uh, from from the Kubernetes cluster, and those can then be exchanged with with Azure ID, Azure ID as I uh, as I mentioned. Uh, the project supports Kubernetes running anywhere instead of just AKS. So whether you're you're doing Kubernetes on 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 uh, bare metal, or or another cloud provider running your Kubernetes on on Raspberry Pi, whatever, uh, it should work just just the same. Um, one one important thing to know is that uh, in order to get forward forward with this, is that you you do need to. Uh, be able to to publish the open ID connect. I'm gonna have to cheat from the next slide. Hopefully, uh, you're gonna need be able need to be able to uh, publish the open ID connect issuer issuer address, uh, which must be available publicly, so that the Azure AD can can basically verify that yeah, this is this is the issuer that we're communicating with, and that's that's required. Uh, it's a really simple thing to do that with AKS, and and the documentation already has has instructions on how to do that on different cloud platforms, as well as as if you're running uh, your own your own Kubernetes clusters in a data center. But that's that's something to keep in mind that that's like the first step if if you want to go crazy and start experimenting with other flavors of uh, uh, Kubernetes. And the way. The way that the feder, uh, the workload identity works is that this time we're not using managed identities for now. I'm gonna talk a bit more about that uh, in a second. Uh, but instead, instead of creating the managed identity like like we did with with uh, the AAD AAD pod identity, we now create an AAD application or or a service principle, um, if you will, and we assign permissions for that that application. Uh, then we create uh, a regular Kubernetes service account and provide necessary annotations uh, that that reference the the application ID of 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 the AAD app that we we just created. Uh, then we'll establish a federated identity between the AAD app and and the Kubernetes service account. So basically, we we uh, form like a trust relationship that that our our Azure AD application uh, the one, this one in the point number two that this application trusts uh, tokens tokens that are originating from from the bullet uh, bullet five actually uh, the service account that's running running in our cluster and then that's that's how we how we kick things off and and once once the federation is complete, uh, the next step is to use that service account as part of your application deployment, and and you're good to go. I'm at a tight. Uh, because uh, because uh, the new project is not using managed identity anymore. Uh, depending on on how your your services and applications have been created, uh, there's a chance that this this will break. Sort of like login login flow, uh, but if you're using uh, if you're creating your own code and you're using the the Microsoft authentication library or or pretty much any of the uh, Azure SDKs, uh, they all have a support already for the workload uh, workload identity. So 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 yeah, if 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 this introduces breaking changes, chances are you still have everything you need to be able to make the the appropriate um, changes and fixes to to get things running with the new project. Uh, on the next slide, I have pretty much the same picture as the previous one. Uh, this one, this time, just just uh, changed with with uh, descriptions uh, directly related to to uh, Kubernetes instead of just having like high level high level yada yadas. Uh, 
but the project itself, the workload identity supports many sort of relationships. So, so you can have a one-to-one, -one, basically like one service account per one uh, Azure AD applications, or or one-to-many and and many-to-one relationships. So, whatever fits best your use case, uh, you just need to use the proper annotations on uh, on the service accounts and your applications, so that so that the Kubernetes cluster. So sort of like knows is aware of which application on Azure side it's supposed to like initiate and and use the permissions from. Uh, I think that at least right now, a single Azure AD application supports uh, twenty federated identities. So so even even if the the one one many to one relation relation is supported, it's twenty to one at maximum. After that. I believe that things things will stop working. Uh, from from like Microsoft's roadmap perspective, uh, the workload identity is is more or less like direct and and more advanced version of of the AAD pod identity. Even though the workflow and and the the, the logging process itself is is pretty much different, like I mentioned. Uh, so when when if if you've been using the AAD pod identity project like I've been, uh, you you've sort of like grown accustomed to using those managed identities and, and right now or as as of right now, uh, the workload identity does not support uh, managed identities. So so that's maybe something that will require indeed changes or or uh, or or yeah. I would say that 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 since since the workload identity is still very much in a preview, uh, and, and, and if you're not in a rush to change uh, to change and stop using the AID pod identity, uh, pod identity uh, I would say that it's it's may, still maybe like a good idea to stick with it for now. Uh, like I said, the primary way of utilizing uh, the AAD provided features is to use the authentication library M MSAL uh, or or use the Azure Identity SDKs that are available for a uh, variety of languages, uh, Go, Java, .NET, Python, uh, JavaScript. So yeah, uh, I haven't tested out tested this out by using my own code. Uh, but 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 the workload identity and and the federation should be part of the the default credential flow, and and if, if you're familiar with that or your application is already taking advantage of that, uh, the the new authentication the federation process should also should also work with that. But that's that's maybe something that uh, you're gonna need to evaluate separately if you're if you're already using that. Um, some of the key differences to to AID pod identity, uh, like I mentioned, uh, no no need for custom resource definitions, and and apparently uh, the AID pod identity uh, NMI pods that were intercepting the instance metadata traffic sometimes caused so caused issue with with individual applications, which led to uh, admins having to do all sorts of exclusions here and there, uh, so that was sometimes a bit 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 tricky and and, and frustrating. Uh, so that all all that is 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 gone for now. Uh, I already mentioned that that the managed identities are are not not supported for now, but it's 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 mentioned in the documentations and 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 the GitHub repo that that the team is working on enabling the managed identity uh, support later down the road. And, and I believe that that's going to be a big deal for for many. Uh, I, for one, know that that uh, the project where I'm working on right now, we're so heavily invested in in managed identities that we're going to have to uh, wait for the support to um, support for them to be available before we can actually migrate any of our production workloads. Uh, the migration guidance on on how to move from the AID pod identity to the new project is is also still still. Under wraps, hoping hoping uh, that that would be available soon to to see see a bit more details about how how things work under the hood. Uh, I actually have a duplicate. Apparently, I already mentioned that the default credential flow uh, should work out of the box. Uh, but yeah, that's subject to to review on on each and every application, I believe. Uh, yeah. So basically, all my ramblings uh, in, in, a, in a nutshell, the TLDR format of, of what's being said. 
uh, in order to to get the ball rolling with the workload identity, uh, first thing off is to expose the open ID connect issuer URL, uh, install the mutating admission webhook, basically means that in, in, we install the workload identity support for the cluster, uh, create an AAD application, assign permissions, uh, create the Kubernetes service account, create the federation, and, and yeah, off we go. Uh, there's also a new tool available from, from, my, from Microsoft specifically for the workload identity. It's called AZWI. It's a CLI tool. Uh, that's capable of creating, uh, you can use that to create uh, the, the Azure AD applications. I think you can also use that to create the service accounts for Kubernetes, and you can use that to create the federation. Uh, the reason for this is that, that some of the things are, especially the federation is, is a bit tricky to do with, with the, the current Azure CLI. It doesn't support the federation as such. Uh, it can still be done, but uh, you would, it's basically just a REST API call for for the graph, graph API. Graph API. So it's uh, maybe a bit more human friendly to use the Azure Azure or the AZWI tool to to make that happen. Uh, pretty sure that next up we have a demo. Yes, let's let's hope that the demo gods are being merciful today. Uh, the documentation for the for the workload identity uh, includes includes uh, a getting started instructions and and they have a demo application of of where you create a key vault and then you deploy an application with with the the, the federated identity and you can fetch the secrets from the key vault. Uh, I'm a lazy guy, so I didn't. Uh, I mean, although I'm a lazy guy, I didn't feel like just copy pasting copy pasting the existing examples and and I made just a little bit of adjustments too to uh, make something different. So this time we're going to create uh, the required identity bits and, and create the federation and, and deploy a, a pod using uh, running the Azure CLI. And we can sort of like take an interactive uh, approach to see, see if those permissions work or not. Uh, I've made, made some, some, uh, some things already ahead so that we don't have to waste time on waiting for the, the AKS cluster to be created. Uh, but these are the Kubernetes manifests that, that we're going to use uh, in the project or, or, or in the demo. They're going to also going to be flying on my screen very shortly, but I just wanted to have them also as screenshots on, on, on a separate slide to maybe make the illustration a bit more, uh, bit more understandable. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have the service account uh we have the service account uh which includes an annotation of which uh application we are using which aad application we are using on on the azure side and also having some uh, labels in place and basically that we are enabling the use of of, of uh, uh the workload identity in the first place and and then we assign a name for the service account and, and the namespace or of which where the service account will be deployed uh, then on the port, the application itself, uh, we are referencing uh, to the service account, basically mean the one on the left-hand side, and that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll show you the, the rest of that stuff in a bit. Um, let's see where I have all my uh, things stored. Uh, I did, like I said, I did some stuff already before I've created a cluster and I've also uh, also installed the workload identity, but I'm going to take a look at these steps uh, in a bit more detail now so that they, they make a bit more sense. Uh, I've created a fairly or actually a completely regular uh, AKS cluster. So I used, I used this command to do it, az AKS create. We assign a resource group and a cluster name, so no special uh, no special parameters at this stage. Uh, but once that was done, uh, we had to specifically uh, we had to specifically run this command. So we made an update to an existing cluster, and the beef here is the dash dash enable OIDC issuer. Uh, this one requires you to uh, register the feature on, on, on the subscri subscription. Uh, I think it's the resource provider is container ser Microsoft.container service. 
and 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 you also need to be running I think the pretty much the latest latest version of of Azure CLI uh, to be able to get this running. Uh, once that is done, we are able to get a response when we when we run an AZ, AZ AKS show and we query for the OpenID Connect issuer profile. So if we now run this one, we should be able to get a response. Yes. Uh, if if you don't have the the, the OIDC issuer enabled, uh, the response is blank. So basically, there's nothing nothing coming back. So that's an easy way to know if if you've enabled the, the necessary features uh, or not. Uh, after that, uh, once once we have that in place, I'll uh, install the workload workload identity using Helm. Uh, what it does is that it in, uh, installs the webhook related or required for the workload identity, and and it, it requires our Azure Azure AD tenant ID as a as a parameter. Uh, I've already done this, like I said, just to cut some corners, uh, and we should have something hopefully running running in the cluster. Yeah, so we have two pieces of, of the webhook controller managers running running uh, on on a specific namespace. Now, if if we want to move forward a bit, uh, I'm gonna export. I lost my mouse. Sorry. Uh, export that that mentioned Open ID Connect issuer address uh, into 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 a, a variable. And also gonna put this down so that I can uh, I have everything I need for the next next steps. And basically just nailing down some of the variables for for the service account so that we don't have to write everything by hand. Uh, okay, now if we want to want to try out that Azure uh, Azure CLI. Uh, we're gonna first off create um, create the the Azure AD application. Hopefully, that worked out fine. Yes, I'm gonna quickly take a look to see if that's already present here as well. Okay, now yeah, maybe it'll take a while, or we can try this one. Okay, well, I'm going to give it a give it a moment because sometimes it just takes a while. Uh, we're also exporting uh, the application's client ID uh, because we're going to need it for uh, for the service account and for the demo itself. Uh, we want to assign the Azure CLI user with uh, reader permissions, so. I've now taken the Azure AD application that I've just created, and instead of contributor, I'm going to give it a uh, set of reader permissions for for my uh, uh, for my subscription of choice. Okay, that's done. And now, if you still remember the left hand side of the screenshot that I showed in in the slides, uh, I'm going to create the service account for for our cluster. Uh, we're using the annotation uh, annotation that references the application client ID right here, and we're going to create that. Okay, first account created. Yeah, it's there. And next up, I'm going to show. Okay, now so now we have the Azure AD application created. Yeah, like like Bossy said, it's most likely a border caching issue. Sometimes it just just like takes up takes a while i'm going to need to sacrifice something here to to get it appear quickly yeah here it is uh so now we have the kubernetes service account created we have the aad application created and we've assigned the aad application with the uh, reader permissions uh next up i'm going to use the the, the acwi uh, cli tool that i mentioned uh and I have a pre-baked command done for that. 
uh, I'm not sure if it's too late to maybe zoom in a bit to make the text hopefully a bit more bit more readable. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 creating a service account. The face here means that, or the face federated identity means that we are uh, creating a, a federation between the AAD applications and the Kubernetes service account. Uh, we provided with the Azure AD application name uh, as well as the service account uh, details from from the Kubernetes side of things, and we hit enter and cross our hands and hope that things go smoothly. Uh, yeah, it's using the default subscription. Uh, federated identity, added federated credentials, blah, 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 blah. Let's see if, if that's already updated here on the portal side as well. Yes. So, yeah, it took me a while to realize that there's actually a new tab here under, under the certificates and secrets, but there indeed is. And there's one called federated credentials, uh, which uh, which shows all, all the federations, basically those trust relationships that, that have been done with this specific AAD uh, application. Uh, things that we can find here is the scenario, Kubernetes access, accessing Azure resources. And there's also options for using that GitHub or, or, or like other, other services that are publishing the OpenID Connect um, bits. And uh, we can find the details that we just provided on the terminal, uh, or, or this is our service account on the Kubernetes side. This is the namespace that we're using, and this is the OpenID issuer address. And yeah, since we did this over on the CLI, we don't have to touch it anymore. I just wanted to show it up as like illustration purposes. Uh, the same thing can be done here on the portal as well, if, if, if that's your thing. So definitely, definitely a, a possibility. Uh, but now, so we have everything ready, everything ready and prepared for our application there where we want to, where we want to uh, uh, take advantage of, of, of the federation. So now we're deploying that pod, uh, we're uh, referencing a namespace where we wanted to run, uh, which, which service account is being used. So it's the same one with, that we just created the federation with. Uh, we're using the latest image of, of Azure CLI, just running a few few commands in the sake of clarity and making sure that 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 the pod and the application runs instead of just shutting down instantly. Uh, yep, it's it's creating, and now I'm going to switch over to another tool of mine, and this is our foobar cluster which we're using for the demo. Come on, don't do this to me. Thanks. Uh, okay, so the pod is now running, and I'm using a tool called Helm to make make all sorts of operations a bit more smoother. Uh, this is the pod that we just created, the CLI, which is running uh, the Azure CLI image, and we're taking taking a shell connection basically an SSH into, into that pod. Uh, okay, if we now, we're now inside that, that Azure CLI pod that's been created and supplied with the federated identity credentials. Uh, if we take a look at the existing uh, environment variables, we notice a few things that are, haven't maybe been up there if you've been using some, some previous like authentication mechanisms. Uh, we can see that, that the Azure tenant ID has been uh, published as an environment variable, <coughs> sorry, as well as something called Azure Authority Host and the Azure Federated Token File. Uh, I'm gonna take a look into into what this is. And well, it's it's not not human readable as as such, but but if we take it take it out of here and. Uh, Go someplace where we where we can hopefully use that information. Uh, we can actually see that that it's uh, it's a chase on web token. So this is this is basically the information that that this this is the token that's been assigned to to our pod, and this is the token that's being used then to again authenticate with with uh, Azure AD if if and when we're going to do that inside of our, our pod. 
And now if we go back to that pod and I mentioned that we're going to try out those permissions. So, so let's, let's do that. I'm going to run a command like this. If you've been using Azure, Azure, Azure CLI with, with many managed identities, you've likely been using that, that AZ login dash dash managed identity or something to, to sort of like use the managed identity uh, login flow. But because that's not available for us right now, we're using using an option called federated token where we provided uh, that same token that I just showed uh, uh, to the Azure, Azure CLI and also adding some some debugs to see see what's running what's running um, under the hood. There's a lot of Python Python stuff being being flown around here, uh, but the big deal is that we're able to log in to, into my my uh, Playground subscription. Uh, hopefully, even run a commands. Okay, yeah, I can uh, run a li list the existing resource groups. Uh, I only provided it with. Uh, reader permissions, so they should not be possible. Yes, I don't have uh, the proper proper permissions for that. Uh, let's let's try to change them from the fly and see uh, see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna rerun the command that I already did previously. Back then, I assigned uh, the AAD applications with 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 the reader permissions. Now I'm gonna take it up a notch and, and upgrade those permissions to contributor. The reason why I locked out of, of, of the pod uh, running uh, running in the cluster is that that we need to basically re re fetch the token again for, for those permissions and, and uh, I'm hoping that it works this fast and, and let's see what happens. Okay, I have now logged in again, this time hopefully, but with the contributor permissions. And yes, at least I had the permissions to, to create resource groups. Uh, and so I take it that those those contributor uh, permissions are, are are now in place as as intended. Uh, yeah, this is this was my uh, fairly short and and hands hands deep demo of of how things work. Uh, personally, I haven't used the workload identity in a, in a production yet. Uh, like I said, I'm currently so so invested with managed identities in a lot of places that that I'm I'm, I'm going to have to wait for the support. Uh, definitely looks promising, and and I I like uh, I like the idea of of the federation. Uh, in general, I think it's it, I think it's a good approach and and make 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 all sorts of like authentication and authorization process uh, a lot more streamlined. But but uh, the workload identity is is still very much in in a preview. So so yeah, it's I, I encourage everyone to uh, go out and explore and and do experiments. But yeah, it's maybe just a tad short of being being mature mature for for uh, production workloads. As of now, uh, that's all that I had that I had to sh say and present. Uh, if you have any any questions, I'm I'm more than happy to to answer any of them. Uh, I noticed that Bossy had a question about if if the ACWI CLI calls are idem idem patent. I'm not sure. I haven't really really taken that close of a look. It's uh, I I did take a look into the project in 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 GitHub. It's a very short, or my, I mean, it, it, it's 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 there's not a lot of code in it. So I'm ba I'm, I'm I'm expecting that it's just doing like REST API calls under the hood, for the most part. Uh, but I haven't haven't really investigated or done done any extensive testing with it back or forth. Yeah, it's maybe a bit telling from Microsoft's side that I don't think this is mentioned anywhere in the documentation yet either. So they do point to what identity is still in their best practices and whatnot, but this may be yes. a bit too new for that. Yes, and and I was I was positively surprised that that the, the ACWI tool is actually written in Go, which oftentimes seems to be something something that the Microsoft is being a bit allergic to. 
but but so yeah i was i was happy to notice notice that uh i can leave this one open uh the address is is azure.github.io slash azure workload identity uh but this is uh the place for all the the relevant documentation documentation if you want to take a look uh, if you want to study the things on your own, there's a pretty good reference on 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 the labels and annotations on what you can use, what you can do and configure uh, if you want to sort of like fine grain any of any of the applications and and do do things on your own. Uh, and the GitHub project also seems to be fairly active. So if you run into issues, uh, just create an issue. I'm sure that that the, the folks there are going to be able to respond in a fairly quick fashion. Yeah, looks great. And I think somebody at Microsoft has finally found Cobra library for Go and they want to write their CLIs with that. Yes, I, I noticed the same thing and I was yeah, I was I was really happy to see that things are things are definitely making progress on on, on that end. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh I suppose as there's no questions yet in the chat, uh, if you still want to ask them, uh, maybe contact Antti somehow in Twitter yes. or LinkedIn or wherever. Yes. And we will be adding a link to the slides uh, to the description of this video, so you can find them there. And also, if Antti has any links he wants to share, there, we will also be adding them there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I can I can add uh, add links to this this website and the GitHub project and a few other places in, on under the slide set, so you can have all the all the references in a single place. Yeah. Sounds great. All right. But thanks, Antti. I'll stop the stream here and we'll talk again. Okay. Thanks a lot.